Hi, my name is Kevin, and today I'm going to be teaching you the rules for Longshot, the dice game. In this 1 to 8 player roll and write game, Longshot the dice game, you'll be placing bets, buying horses, and influencing the race as 8 horses race around the track. A horse's movement is mostly determined by the roll of the die, but as a player, you will have a few ways to influence the position of the horses and hopefully help certain horses cross the finish line first. So let's jump into the setup. First, place the board in the center of the table. Next, collect the eight wooden horse tokens and place them in a row behind the blue line. This blue line represents both the starting line and the finish line. Now, grab a deck of horse cards, numbered one through eight. If this is your first game, it is recommended that you use the deck of cards with this symbol here. Sets of horse cards play well together, but feel free to mix and match cards however you would like. Just make sure you have one and only one horse card for each horse. After selecting horse cards, place them above the board to create the market, and return the rest of the horse cards to the box. Give each player a player board and dry erase marker. These are your starting cards. Randomly deal one starting card to each player. Each player will find the four X marks on the concession grid of their starting card and mark the concession grid on their player board to match. Similarly, they'll write the two numbers in the bet spaces of the horses listed onto their player board as well. Now, everyone begins with $12, so each player will write 12 onto the dollar space of their player board. The player who most recently made a bet starts as the active player, and they will take the two dice. You're now ready to begin. The general flow of the game is very simple. The active player will roll both dice, which will determine which horses move and how many spaces. Then, each player will take one action. That's it. That's what happens during a turn. This process is repeated until eventually three horses have crossed the finish line. So let's talk about horse movement and horse cards. The game begins with the active player rolling both dice. The eight-sided die will determine which horse is moving, and the six-sided die will determine how many spaces it moves. In this case, the yellow horse number two will move three spaces. Now, we will look at the card for horse number two and look at this bar at the bottom of the card. This is the secondary movement bar, and it shows an X mark on the green horse number five. That means horse number five will move forward one space. Some cards start with a single horse on the secondary movement bar while others start with two. Over the course of the game, you'll be able to mark off more horses on the secondary movement bar of the different horse cards, allowing you to slightly manipulate which horses move more often than others. So later in the game, let's assume the players have marked off a few additional horses on the purple horse number eight's secondary movement bar. That means when the eight is rolled on the eight-sided die, the purple horse number eight will move forward this many spaces. And then, for the secondary movement, horses numbered 1, 2, 4, 5, and 6 will move forward one space. Keep in mind that secondary movement will only move a horse forward one space, never more. We'll talk about the rest of the information on the horse cards in just a few minutes. So, after horse movement, each player will take one action in turn order, starting with the active player. There are five different actions that players may take. Concessions, helmet, jersey, bet, and buy. The concession action will allow you to mark off one of the circular spaces on your concession grid. The number you're marking off must match the number that was rolled on the horse die. After completing a row or column in your concession grid, you gain a concession bonus. If you complete a row and column in the same turn, you'll gain two concession bonuses. When you gain a concession bonus, you must use it immediately. The icons here are the different concession bonuses you may select. Once you select a bonus, mark it off and resolve the effect. You cannot mark a concession bonus space that has already been marked. These three concession bonuses are all the same. They each let you gain $7. If you mark one of these spaces, add seven to your total over here. These four concession bonuses let you manipulate the positions of the horses on the track. This space lets you move any two different horses forward two spaces on the track, while this space lets you move any two different horses backwards two spaces. Similarly, this space lets you move any one horse forward three spaces, and this lets you move any one horse backwards three spaces. But keep in mind that you can never move a horse back further than the original starting space, 
So if you're using one of these actions to move a horse backwards, it will move back to the starting space and any further movement is wasted. Also, a horse cannot cross the finish line with one of these concession bonuses. If you're moving a horse forward with one of these bonuses and it reaches the final space before crossing the finish line, it will stop there and any further movement is wasted. Each of these concession bonuses will give you a free $3 bet on any horse. This bonus lets you take the helmet action on any horse, this lets you take the jersey action on any horse, and this one lets you take any horse from the market to own without paying its cost. When taking the helmet action, mark an X on the helmet space of the horse that matches the number on the rolled horse die. When you have the helmet space of a horse marked, it means you may continue making bets on that specific horse even after it has passed the no bet line. Speaking of which, this line on the track is the no bet line. For example, if you do not have the helmet space of the green horse number 5 marked, then when it passes this line, you will not be allowed to make any more bets on horse number 5. The jersey action allows you to mark the jersey space on the horse that matches the number rolled on the horse die. When you do this, find the horse card matching that horse, whether it is still in the market or in someone's possession, and mark any horse on the secondary movement bar. Also, at the end of the game, you'll receive $5 for every horse that has both the helmet and jersey spaces marked. If you take the bet action, you have the opportunity to bet on the horse that matches the number rolled on the horse die. You're allowed to bet one, two, or three dollars. Let's say the pink number four horse is rolled and it takes the lead, and I want to bet on it. I choose to take a bet action and decide to bet two dollars on it. I subtract two dollars from my total here and then add two dollars to the amount in the betting space of the pink number four horse. Since I had already bet three dollars on the pink number four horse, that brings my total up to five. I mentioned it earlier, but I'm just going to remind you that this line here is the no bet line. Once a horse passes this line, you may no longer place bets on that horse unless you have marked off the helmet space for that horse. The last action you can take is the buy action, which allows you to purchase a horse from the market. The only horse you're allowed to buy is the horse that matches the number rolled on the horse die. If that horse hasn't been purchased yet, and you have enough money to pay for it, you may spend the required money to buy that horse. You'll take the card and place it in front of you. These cards have special abilities on them that will activate during different times in the game. Some will activate when you buy them, some will provide additional money at the end of the game, and some will give you an ability to use throughout the game. For example, if you own Scattershot, anytime you take a concession action, you may mark a space as if the horse die rolled was actually one lower or one higher than the actual rolled result. In other words, if the horse die shows a 5, you could choose to mark off a 4 or a 6 because of Scattershot's ability. Also, the abilities on horse cards are always optional. You might find that in some cases, you actually don't want to use an ability, and that's totally fine. You're not required to use it. Now, a few additional things to be aware of. First, you might have noticed that all the actions you're allowed to take are dependent on the result rolled on the horse die. Well, don't forget that the concession bonuses that you gain from completing a row or column can be applied to any horse, with a few exceptions. The no bet line still has power when gaining concession bonuses. Also, once a horse has passed the finish line, absolutely no more bets may be placed on it, and it cannot be bought. Another thing to note is that once you buy a horse, it stays with you for the remainder of the game. In other words, you cannot buy horses from other players. You also might have noticed these three horseshoe spaces here, labeled wild. When taking your action, you may choose to mark one of these wild spaces to treat the number on the horse die as if it were any other result. You will not physically pick up and change the die result on the die though, because this wild only applies to you and no other players. Continue taking your action as if the horse die showed the die result you want. And keep in mind that when using a wild, this new chosen die result does not activate abilities on horse cards that are dependent on the die result. In other words, let's say the active player rolled an 8, causing the purple horse to move. You, however, would rather bet some money on your yellow number 2 horse, so you mark one of your wilds and treat the 8 as if it were a 2. The ability for this horse, too lucky, gains you $2 when a 2 is rolled, but technically a 2 was not rolled, so using a wild does not let you activate this ability. You could, however, still spend some money and bet on this horse because you used the wild. 
Horse abilities like these, however, will still activate with the wild because their activation is not dependent on the result of the horse die, but are simply activated when a certain action is taken. Also, instead of taking a normal action, you are allowed to instead spend your turn erasing a mark on one of your wild spaces. So if you ever run into a situation where you can't do anything, this lets you erase a wild space to recover that space for use again in the future. And you may choose to recover a wild space even if you still have one available. After each player has taken a turn, the active player will pass the dice to the player on their left and a new round begins. Play will continue like this until three horses have passed the finish line. When the first horse passes the finish line, take the wooden horse token and move it to the top spot on this track here, the winner's circle. The second horse to cross the finish line will go here and the third will go here. Once a horse has crossed the finish line, no more bets can be made for that horse, you cannot buy that horse, and that horse will no longer move. So if that number is rolled on the horse die on a future turn, it stays where it is in the winner's circle and then you'll just move the horses on its secondary movement bar. Just a reminder that horses cannot pass the finish line from a concession bonus ability. They can only pass the finish line from their horse number being rolled or from a secondary movement. Once the third horse crosses the finish line, no other horses will move. Once all players have taken their actions for the round, instead of proceeding to the next round, the game will move into the scoring phase. For the scoring, the player that owns the first place horse will gain $35. The second place horse owner gains $25 and the third place horse owner gains $15. These totals will go in this space here. Next, each player will check how many pairs of helmets and jerseys they have and add $5 for each pair, writing the total here. After that, players total up their earnings from the bets they made. On each player board, there are four multiplier columns to help with this. Find the horse that came in first and circle the number in the first place column. Do the same with the horses that came in second and third place, circling the number from each corresponding column. Now, look at the board and see which horses managed to pass the no bet line. For these horses, circle the one in this column here. Now, go through all your horses and multiply your bet times the circled number, writing the answer on the right side of the columns. If you placed no bets on a certain horse, or if the horse did not at least cross the no bet line, then you'll earn no money from it. Once you've multiplied all your bet earnings, total them up and write your number here. Also, you can now add that total to this space here. Finally, write the number of leftover money in this space, along with any money earned from the horse abilities. And then add up all your totals together to find your final score. The player with the most money at the end of the game wins. If there's a tie, the player owning the horse that placed highest in the race is the winner. And that, my friends, is how you play Long Shot the Dice Game. If you're interested in learning how to play solo, <laughs> we're gonna jump into that right now. If you're playing a solo game, you'll be betting against noted racing tycoon Roland Wright. For the setup, follow the same setup as a normal game, but with the following changes. First, Roland receives the special solo board. When dealing starting cards, deal one to Roland as well. Mark Roland's starting bets, but you'll notice that he does not have a concession grid, so you can ignore the concessions on the starting card. Roland starts with $20, so mark that here. When playing a solo game, you will always take your turn first. After you've taken your action, Roland will take his, and the action that Roland takes is dependent on the dice roll. First, look at the six-sided die. In this case, the six-sided die shows a three, which means we'll look at this column here. Next, we look at the 8-sided die, which in this case shows the pink 4. So now, in our 3 column, we find the space for the pink 4. So Roland gains $2 for his action. However, a handful of Roland's actions show the icon for the 8-sided horse die, which means you'll roll that die again and resolve the effect using that new die result. So if he was triggering this action here, you would roll the 8-sided die again, and Roland would get to place a free $2 bet on the blue six horse. If, for whatever reason, Roland's action cannot be taken, then he will take the default action at the bottom of the column. Column number three will mostly mark horse cards, similar to a player taking the jersey action. Column two will mostly place bets on horses, and column one will mostly buy horses. Just like the player, Roland must spend money in order to place bets and buy horses, unless the action is labeled as free. 
If there is ever a tie among several horses for how an action is going to be taken, Roland will attempt to take the action with the lowest numbered tied horse. And for the new terminology on the solo board, the word lead refers to the horses that have not yet finished the race that have the least spaces until they finish. Last place refers to the horses that have the most spaces until they finish. And horses box is the horse number on the secondary movement bar. For final scoring, Roland earns money for the horses he owns in the winner circle, for his bets, and he adds his leftover money. Write his final score here and compare it to your final score. The player with the most money wins. And those are the solo rules for Longshot the Dice Game. Thank you so much for watching, I will see you in the next video.